Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Warmest regards from Turkey. Um, from uh, very sunny, very hot, and very beautiful city of Turkey, Antalya, I'm sending you my warmest regards. Okay, so I'll be speaking about mindsets in ELT today, and I'm going to share my presentation with you. And let me first introduce myself. I'm Gülbin Özdemir Altıgöz from Turkey. I'm a teacher of English and I've been working as an English teacher uh, for about 10 years already. And I'm also TESOL advanced practitioner. And what else I could say? I'm here for you to um, share my knowledge with you. So. As a resource person of the International Internship University, I'll be talking about uh, some brief information about EEU or IIU, let's say. So it is the world's first internship-based virtual university. It builds a better, brighter future for all young learners. It is committed to provide quality, accessible, affordable, skill-based and location-independent education to learners across the world. IIU provides access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internship to their e-learners across the globe with a team of high caliber and experienced global educators. IIU has been accredited and affiliated with the WEO, World Education Organization, and IAO, and collaborated with the all world's top universities and educational institutions through the platform of MOOCs, that is Massive Open, uh, open Online Courses. And also IAU provides various certificates and uh, diploma courses. Let's keep on. There's always that one person who has the vision, thought, idea behind the successful venture and the organization. And if we talk about the man behind the success of IIU, it's no other person than our co-founder, Piyush Pandit, Mr. Piyush Pandit. He concluded the world's first virtual internship university during the pandemic, which is really successful, I think. This is international internship university iiu let's keep on talking so what is a mindset we're going to talk about the mindsets first so i'm going to start with the definition of mindset that is really important and crucial so it was first proposed by stanford professor carl dweck s self perfection uh, perception or self theory that people hold about themselves. What do you think about yourself is your mindset, okay? So it could be related to either your personal or professional lives. So you could say, I'm really intelligent, okay? Or you could say, I'm really unintelligent. I can't do anything. That's my inner IQ or innate IQ, you could say, or for your professional life, you could say, I'm a good teacher, or I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. No, teaching is not for me, you could say. So these are all related to your mindset. So let's keep on our, I'm going to put me in here. Um, Growth mindset versus fixed mindset. Let's compare them because if we talk about mindsets, we should definitely um, list a fixed mindset and growth mindset under the title of mindset. So fixed mindset and growth mindset are both proposed by Stanford professor Carol Dweck in 2006 in her book, Mindset, The Mindset. So uh, with fixed mindset people, people with fixed mindset believe that talent is enough to lead the success. They only believe that, okay, talent is really enough and we don't have anything to go further. They believe that they can only be either good or bad at something and they can't go further because their innate capacity is um, just like that, okay? 
So they just said, okay, I'm, I'm here and I was born with this talent. I was born with this capability. I'm fixed. So as you can see, this is my brain. This is my IQ and this is fixed. I can't do anything about it. They think so. So whereas people with growth mindset, they believe that their abilities can be developed by effort, dedication, and hard work, of course, in time. And they believe that talent and brains are just starting point for development. This is really crucial and vital because they just say that, okay, I've got a brain. I was born with that brain, but I can do it. Um, like I can train my brain and I can develop my abilities. I can develop my um, knowledge and improve my knowledge about this world. I can work on my abilities and I can do my best in order to achieve the best of it. And let's keep on going. Another comparison. So as you can see, fixed mindset and growth mindset are really um, separated from each other. For mixed, fixed mindset, we can say they have the belief that they have innate IQ and they can not do anything about it. This is an innate IQ and they can't develop, they can't improve, they can't do anything about it. They just believe so. They've got resistance because they don't like new things, they don't like challenges and they are unwilling to do something they don't understand or something really, really new to them or something foreign to them, let's say. And they've got fear for learning and doing anything that they could do um, with a growth mindset. But instead, they just, um, it's like a closed box or closed, uh, how to say, can. You can't open it if they don't want. It's something like this. So first of all, they need to say that, okay, I'm ready to open myself. It's something like that. For growth mindset, you can see they can believe that they have developed IQ. This is really crucial because they think that, okay, I was born with this, but I can develop it. This is in my hands. This is my power, inner power. They get motivation. This is really important. They believe that with effort and with dedication, they can do anything they would like to do. And they've got courage. That's the most important and that's the most outstanding uh, thing with growth mindset. This is really important because if you got fear, if you're afraid of doing something, of course you can't do anything. But if you have courage and if you're brave enough, to do something new or to try. So all the doors open for you in front of you immediately, believe me. Another comparison. Let's look at the statements now. Fixed mindset versus growth mindset. So with people with the fixed mindset probably say, I can't do this. And they close themselves. I can't do this, no. But whereas people with growth mindset, they can say, I believe I can do this. I believe I can do this. That's in my hand. Another statement. This is like example or simple statements that you can um, meet or you can encounter in, a, in your everyday lives. Even with your colleagues, friends, students, anyone you can think of. And you can just find out about people with fixed mindset and growth mindset more easily. For example, the second sample, I don't like challenges. I'm, I'm here and I'm good at like this. I'm good. I'm really good, they say. But people with growth mindset say, I love challenges. I'm going to try myself. I'm going to try something new. And that is really, really good and cool. Wow. They got the excitement. So another one, I'm only good at certain things. Something like, I'm only good at English. I can't do German, or I can't do maths, or I can't play volleyball, or I can't play basketball because I'm only good at English. That's my nature. No, it's not like that. People with growth mindset say, I can be good at anything I want. Anything I want, that's the most 
um, perfect thing for me because I'm here in the world to try out everything, try out new things for myself. So you're gonna see more statements to figure out what fixed mindset is and what growth mindset is. People with fixed mindset probably say, I don't like doing what I don't know. So for your students, if you're teachers, for your students, it's typical, really typical. They just say, okay, I don't like doing this. I don't like this homework, or I don't like to read. I don't like to solve this problem, something like this, so on and so forth. But people with growth mindset say, I like learning about the things I don't know because it will improve my inner capacity. It will improve my knowledge. It will improve my nature. And other statements for you to understand it better. I give up easily if I don't understand. Actually, this is really typical for even for us, if you think. I give up easily if I don't understand, especially um, with the guides that, for example, electronical um, items that you buy, a new phone or a new um, hair dryer or a new something that you can think of, and you just um, don't want to read the, the guidelines because you don't understand them. It's like Chinese or it's like Japanese. It's so hard. And then you just give up. Okay, I'm going to just um, push the button open or on, off. Uh, I'm going to restart, <laughs> something like that. You just give, give up easily, but it's not the way it is. People with growth mindset say, I try my best to understand it better. This is really crucial because if you try um, to understand that those guidelines or those statements in the in the book or ebook, let's say, for sure you will um, figure out all the problems that you have in your mind. They're going to be clearer when you try your best. And this is the most uh, important for me. When I fail, I'm no good. When I fail, I'm no good. I'm useless, they just say. Okay, this is um, actually uh, really, really, uh, how to say, sad for me, because I had in the past some students with this um, type of mindset, and they just said, okay, I don't understand English, and I'm no good. I'm useless. I can't do anything in English exams but I need English, but okay, now I won't be doing any, any English right now. I'm fed up with it. I'm stop, I, I, I stop right here, they say. But people with growth mindset would say, when I fail, I learn. There's nothing to be afraid of trying or making mistakes or failing. This is crucial because um, most of us, just really think about um, our exams or our job interviews or our um, results, exam results. And they just, and then we just say, okay, if I fail, I'm useless because this is really important for me. But that's not the way it is. We can fail. We cannot do anything that um, offers Everything, everything in, in, in um, how to say, we can't do everything in one hand or in one time. You just need some time to do, um, to do or to make them come true in, in, an, in time and in an order. You can't do everything in one, uh, you can't, how to say, you can't put everything in a bag. I'm going to explain like this, because you can fail, you can do an, something wrong, but you, you're not uh, supposed to be afraid of it. That's your nature. Other statements, fixed mindset and growth mindset. I think it's, it's going to be like clearer for you. It's going to be crystal clear after this presentation, what is fixed mindset and what is growth mindset. For example, those statements, let's, let's look at those statements. I think English is hard. I can't learn this language. So I, I'm just, I give up. I don't think I'm a maths person because I'm good at um, physical education. I, I'm good at uh, football. 
I'm not a math person, they could say. But people with growth mindset would say, I think English is fun. When I make a mistake, I learn. That's just all. Maths is not easy, but I can learn if I try harder. That's really fantastic. Maths is, of course, or English is, of course, not easy. They're not difficult, but they're not easy either. And if you try hard, if you try your best, you can learn it. It's not impossible. So, for example, for fixed mindset, Amir is a smart student in class. I'll never be that smart. People with fixed mindset would say, whereas people with growth mindset say, I can be as smart as any other student in class if I try my best. That's what we want as teachers. That's the mindset we want as teachers in students. So let's see, fixed mindset, we talked about growth mindset, we talked about, but we didn't talk about what does language learning or teaching have to do with mindsets. Let's talk about them now. So as you can see, this is language mindset, beliefs that people have about their ability to learn languages. This is language mindset, we call it like this. For example, in order to figure out in a more um, clarified way, you could say you are either can learn English or can't learn English. And that's all. You get two options. You either can learn English and you can be good at it, or you can't learn English and you are useless. This is fixed mindset. You are either good at English or bad at English. We just talked about it. So if you have a fixed mindset, you would probably say, okay, I can learn English or I can't learn English. So this is typical because you get two options. No other than two options is um, possible for you. Two options. You are either good or either bad. There are no um, gray parts. You are either black or you're either uh, white. But people with growth mindset would say, with the right amount of effort, time and practice, anyone can learn English. If we talk about language learning or language teaching. So I will um, describe language as English from now on because I'm an English teacher and we're talking about English as a language here. So from now on, I'll be telling you English as language. So most students have pure fixed mindset, but where is the other part? relatively few students have growth mindset. And this is really um, disappointing for us. For example, you get students or in the past, you had that mindset and you would say, I'm not good at English. So let's choose another thing. Let's choose Indian. Let's choose, um, how, how, how can I say, let's choose volleyball or let's choose baseball or let's choose anything else anything else rather than English, because I'm not good at English, so I won't be doing English in the future. But um, for growth mindset, they could say, I can be good at English if I try. This is slightly um, opening the future doors for you, like, okay, I can do something. Wow, this is light of hope coming over uh, from the rainbow or coming over the clouds. It's like that. So we want this mindset in our students, not fixed mindset, because fixed mindset is really challenging and is really hard and um, so it's tiring for the teachers and for the students as well, because you have a fixed mindset and you, in order to change it, you have to do lots of things, lots of, um, you have to encounter, you have to face lots of problems and challenges in order to uh, tear that mindset up and then you could place, replace that mindset with growth mindset. So. 
What growth mindset has to do with language learning or teaching? We already talked about it, but I'm going to uh, emphasize the, uh, the advantages of growth mindset in language learning or language teaching. First, it affects the student's attitude towards the language. This is crucial because if you don't like English, probably, most probably, you will not learn it. Or it is the same. It's more or less the same for the teacher as well. Um, if you don't like your teacher, you don't like the lesson. It's something like this. So your attitude is really uh, important. Second of all, it affects students' success in that language. Students' success in language learning or language um, progress. The third of all, it affects students' self-perception in language learning process. These are all um, really, really vital because if you have a growth mindset, it is, um, it is really easy to manipulate your language learning. And you would say, okay, I made a mistake, but it's not important. I can do it better tomorrow. Who cares? It's something like that. And what we want as teachers from our students is that they um, not should have, but they uh, are required to have growth mindset. And we are the facilitators and leaders for uh, developing or um, improving growth mindset in their brains, in their personalities. What should the EFL teachers do? So I listed some statements over here and some, how to say, uh, some tricks, we can say tricks for them. So EFL teachers, English language te teachers, ESL or EFL, it doesn't really matter for this situation. So in order to promote growth mindset or enhance growth mindset, we could uh, do some things like I kindly suggest them it's not my job, actually. It's not, it's not my duty, but I kind of suggest that let them make mistakes. This is, um, especially for young learners, this is really crucial. It allows them to realize their progress and have fun with the language. Use free form activities. It allows them to focus more on real communication because what we want is the communication rather than grammar rules or rather than vocabulary or rather than just the use of language. Okay, this is uh, type one, if type one, two, type, type two, type three, something like this, grammar, grammar, grammar all the time. And then we just ended up like, we just end up like, okay, we can't teach English or we can't learn English because of the grammar or because of the vocab, because of the, um, because of the use of, or too much use of grammar or too much teaching of grammar. So I would kindly suggest that the real communication would be um, at the center of your teaching. And for this communication, a goal for this communication target, you could use free form activities in order to enhance growth mindset in your students. Encourage them to engage. For example, uh, for over five years, I've been working at a primary school with young learners and they look like they engage all the time because they're like, um, their kinesthetic learning uh, um, parts are so interactive, but somehow you just uh, see or you just observe them, they won't like to participate or they wouldn't uh, wish to engage in your lesson. Why? Because they're shy, because they're so embarrassed, because they're afraid of uh, being mocked or they're afraid of um, being uh, manipulated or being uh, mocked by their peers. And you would uh, most probably just 
you some activities or some um, even your gestures or mimics or your activities or games would encourage them to engage in your lesson even with raising their hands or even um, at a glance at your uh, writing on the board or even asking a question for them, it's vital. You can't imagine how important it is for them to engage in the lesson. Otherwise, they would sit still and they would just hear what you say and they would listen to your, to your um, sentences, but they won't uh, really listen or they won't really uh, put their hearts in that lesson and they won't uh, they won't be uh, taught it's just okay I taught the lesson it was really important and it was really enjoying and it was really fun okay but what did the students get from your lesson nothing no engaging is vital for learning so encourage them to engage, I kindly suggest. Applause their progress, not their results. This is crucial because we uh, normally, uh, we were like, we grew up in, in, a, in a city or in a country or at schools where the results were appreciated more, not the progress. Okay, from that exam, what did you get? From that exam, what was your score? From what, uh, which lesson or from that lesson, what did you get as a uh, exam score? So our parents often asked us about our scores or about our final marks. But as teachers now, we should um, give the credits to their progress rather than uh, their results. It enhances their efforts and hard work. So you should observe them. Like you're gonna observe them for sure. At, at the end of this um, applauding progress, uh, you you would probably observe that. Okay, wow, they just got a star from you because they they stepped um, on and said something in English or said something uh, really um vital for that lesson or just raise their hands you just gave okay good job well done so that student would probably would probably uh follow your lessons more and then you should observe that okay everything will fine it will be fine after uh your feedback your positive feedback and your applause or or uh, appreciation that student. So that student will be the star of your lesson, who knows? Okay, student will be like, from fixed mindset to growth mindset, there's a, a scale. For example, they will start, I can't, saying I can't, then it will turn out to I might, then it will turn out to I think I can, I'm not sure, but I think I can, oh. And then at the end, it will surely be, I'm sure I can, I can, I'm, I'm, I have the capacity, I have the power. So we want our students be like, I'm sure I can with growth mindset. So um, for a class full of students with growth mindset, we just need some uh, some rules or how to say some things that we need to um, need to mind or we need to uh, be aware of. So there are some don'ts and do's. So I'm going to start with do's. For example, these are my um, suggestions. <laughs> these are not the rules, but um, with experience of years. So I just found out these do's. Give positive but honest feedback to your students. Involve them in fun lessons. Tell them about the importance of their growth. Follow your, their progress. Make them believe that they can. Make them believe that they have the inner power. These are really crucial for don'ts. 
do not give direct and negative feedback to your students. Of course you don't. I don't. I, I know, I'm sure. But it's just a um, it's just a just a word. <laughs> do not focus on their results. This is crucial. Do not tell them they're not good enough. Often in the past, I remember some teachers of mine saying, you're not good enough for volleyball, you're not good enough basketball, you're not good enough maths, you're not good enough science for science, something like that. So we should not tell them that they're not good enough for English or learning a language. Do not compare their levels with other students. Do not make them fear from the language learning process. Do not give up when they say, no, I don't wanna do it. This is, um, this is perfect for teachers because uh, oftentimes we say that, oh, I, I, I'm uh, like, okay, from uh, the lesson, from, from the, the previous lesson, I had some, um, some negative remarks, or I had a bad experience from my previous lesson. So all the students were silent, or all the students, or most of the students didn't want to participate. So I think I'm not going to use that um, activity, or not. I'm not going to use that um, game again. So no, don't give up. At least you <laughs> don't give up. Because students could say no, of course, all the time. Students um, would, you observe those students, they would say uh, no, or they would say no with their eyes. So um, this is really important for us as teachers, not to say I'm fed up or I give up. This is crucial. So in the future, growth mindset, help, I really do hope, wholeheartedly hope, we can all have students with growth mindset all around the world in the future, because um, this affects everything, like um, step by step. It affects your teaching, then it affects your uh, classroom, then it, it affects the school atmosphere, then it, it affects the uh, parent-teacher collaboration, and then it spreads and spreads and spreads, and it affects positively the education system, who knows? So um, this is my wish. This is my uh, wish for the future. I hope we can all have students with growth mindset. Not all, maybe, but most of the students, if we win those students, I would really be delighted and thrilled to, um, to, to observe the change in their uh, progress and in their um, future works and future jobs and everything. So that's really important for me. I would like to say thank you for joining me and listening to me for this session. And also I'd like to thank Corina Stea for uh, her collaboration and encouraging me to take part in this session and uh, to, to, to our moderator and to uh, everything behind the scenes of working for International Internship University. I wanna thank you and I wanna thank uh, a million to you. Thank you for everything. So I'm gonna stop my screen sharing so that you could see. And I'm here for you to ask questions if you want, but I need to I need to look at my Facebook account <laughs> to see your comments if you have. If you get questions, I would appreciate and I would be happy to answer but I need to find out. I put one question here in the chat. 
Uh huh. So I'm gonna figure out how is it possible to teach 150 students all different with different learning rhythms? One question from Watcher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so these are the students in one uh, class. Not really, right? 150 students in one class? No, I don't think so. But um, if you're responsible for uh, 150 uh, students, actually, I, I can see um, how hard it is. And I can imagine how challenging it would be. But it's not impossible because I could um, maybe you won't believe it. I don't know. Maybe you, you won't believe it, but I, for, for over five years, so I've, I've been working at a primary school with young learners aged like uh, eight, nine, and 10. And they have, like, they're coming from wealthy families and they're sometimes they have some snobbish <laughs> um, acts and they don't want to take part in any lessons or any activities for some reason, for some time. And I just figure out new uh, solutions to them. I love challenges and I just try. I try maybe a hundred times in order to see if it works. I know it is hard. I can definitely understand you, but I've got, um, you won't believe it, but I've got 300 students and like second graders, third graders and fourth graders because I'm the only English teacher in that school. And the parents give credits to the class teacher all the time and you should make yourself uh, valuable in order, to, um, in order to be respected at your classes, at your school. And I tried lots of things, believe me, lots of things like games, creative drama and um, rhymes and some other books. But most of all, I just uh, used I, or benefited from competition, uh, competitions and some uh, symbols of uh, awards maybe the real world sometimes like stars and some magazines like science magazines or English magazines or sometimes toys, sometimes medals like, okay, if you're counting from one to 100, I'm gonna give you a medal. This is, I, I don't know. Sometimes my colleagues say, okay, for this a medal, come on, medals are given for a more important things. So if the student can count from one to 100, so, okay. So, so what is it? But I oftentimes say to them, okay, the medal, maybe that medal would be the best or the most precious thing in that student's life. And it is given by a teacher and that makes the, the award most like more uh, valuable. Then I, I just can say that I observed so many students of mine um, after taking those medals their academic uh, scores or academic success became, uh, the levels became higher and their interests in English and learning English became higher and everything changed. I could say wholeheartedly, but um, sometimes these are not affordable. I can just agree. Uh, I can agree on that with you. Sometimes uh, like talking and teaching to those students can be tiring and sometimes you feel exhausted. Sometimes you feel, okay, teaching is not for me. I know, but you should try. You should never give up because there are some ways hidden under the boxes, but we uh, still can't see them or still can't find, or we haven't 
uh, just found out them. So I could say that one for an answer. Any other questions? If they have, or any other comments, any other uh, experiences that you had in the past? I would really be interested to hear that those experiences or those stories with, uh, that you shared with your students, if you got any. Oh, so much bureaucracy, <laughs> so much bureaucracy around. Oh, I saw a, a command that isn't left much time to prepare accurately. Oh, bureaucracy is everywhere. <laughs> There's no escape from bureaucracy. I'm sorry for that. And, oh, impossible doesn't exist. We have to think positive. Yeah, exactly, definitely, I agree. Impossible doesn't exist, especially with teachers because after the pandemic, it's, it's about like, it's gonna be out of the topic, but I'm gonna say, after the pandemic, we as teachers, most of us uh, expected that, okay, the pandemic showed the parents the importance of teaching and teachers. So after the pandemic, when we go back to our schools, we're gonna be uh, met like kings and queens. <laughs> And everything will be fine and everything with all the problems will be solved and there will there will be and no problems or little problems, let's say, but uh, that didn't happen. Everything <laughs> that didn't happen, actually, okay, they told us uh, teaching is really hard, teachers, oh, we respect your job. Oh, we do respect your being here or your presence. Yeah, we just understood um, how teaching, uh, how hard the teaching is during the pandemic when we were uh, back at home with our kids, like four kids or six kids, and trying to um, make them do their homeworks or make them do anything you want and they don't want to do and they just fed up and they just give up and we needed we, we just search for lots of ways to persuade them to do something but it's really hard they they just told that yeah i experienced it but things um not changing but slightly and slowly of course but i do believe i do uh hope that in the future teachers are um teachers will be the most appreciated among let's say teachers will be the, the those jobs uh among those um who will be most appreciated and respected that's my wish and my hope for the future i've been a teacher for six oh 25 years <laughs> i love teaching me too thank you ah unfortunately not in here portugal oh sorry to hear that it's really really sad to hear that not in portugal so um i think the society doesn't consider school important well does this kind of school four wall schools make sense in the yeah, 21st century yeah 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 there, there are lots of things to be done for schools um and there are some steps and there are some efforts to uh, make the schools more more um how to say creative make the schools look more creative or more appealing for the students uh, but they started with high schools especially wet ones and i see some other buildings of schools like oh wow is it a school oh wow <laughs> you I, I in turkey i've um i've seen so many uh efforts for making schools look uh, more appealing for the students. But yeah, we need some time. We need some time to uh, experience all the 
um, good sides and bad sides, both sides of the coin, let's say. But in time, we're going to see, we're going to experience, I think. E-learning is the future. <laughs> well done, Able Excellency. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love teaching. And I I'm looking for some questions, feedback, representations, middle session. Thank you. Feedback link. And yeah. So thank you for your comments. Thank you for your beautiful comments. I tried my best to, to talk about the topic in a less boring uh, way, because sometimes listening to a person, uh, especially if she or he talks about all the time and with a presentation online, that is really difficult and hard to, um, to get people's attention and to um, make them be with you all the time. Um, this is really, really hard and difficult for many people. And, and for teachers during the pandemic, we went for live sessions, we went for live lessons on Zoom, and we encountered so many problems like technological problems, technical problems, or parental problems. Um, I don't know if you faced those those problems, but we faced lots of problems with WhatsApp and so and and Zoom because not every teacher had the the um, the, the the basic skills to to teach something through Zoom because Zoom Zoom is not complicated but seems complicated for some of other uh, some of my colleagues and we face some problems with parents because they don't they didn't have some internet connection and uh, they just try to follow the lessons uh, on a tablet or on a phone mobile phone so these were the, those were like really hard uh, days for all of us I think our motivation is really important. Congratulations. Thank you. It should come from the inside. Nothing can learn unless they want to. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Spending eight days every day at school. Eight days. Wow. Eight days. <laughs> eight days. Cool. Yeah, that's the definition for teachers. Burnout or teachers um, like expected well-being eight eight days yeah i definitely agree on that nobody can learn without motivation yeah motivation is the key uh solution to everything but not not all the teachers or not all the students can be motivated through just one thing um motivation channels or motivation resources can differ all the time so it is really hard to find the common place to gather around and make it the center of your teaching. And then so that the students can um, meet there at the center of that motivation resource, the target. And yeah, it is, it is really hard. I know it is really hard, but it's not impossible. That's the thing that makes us happy and blissful, actually. So I'm happy for that. Finding motivation resources is really uh, important and they're key to, to have some growth mindset in our students. I agree. I eight hours, you mean? <laughs> I hate this. Yeah, I, I understood eight days like uh, too much work on the teacher's shoulders. This is um, tiring, actually. For some teachers, for some colleagues of mine, they say, OK, I go to school four days or I go to school three days. So I've got like 20 hours, 15 hours a week. So it's, it's incredible. But some teachers, some colleagues of mine, they say, oh, we've got so many, uh, so many hours. 
and like 30 hours, maybe 32 hours a week. Normally the limit is 30 hours a week in Turkey, but sometimes they have 32, 34, 35 and plus. And yeah, this is, this is really incredible for teachers. And we need to appreciate all the teachers for their hard work and for their, um, for their uh, dedication. They, they and efforts and their hearts that they put on their jobs. This is this is really incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Lessons to prepare meetings said and yeah, yeah, yeah. Teachers, yeah. There are so many things for yeah. There are so many things that that are um, expected from the teachers. Uh, but we do expect lots of things from the students as well. So there is a balance, <laughs> let's say like this. So um, sometimes the balance would be like, oh, oh, <laughs> we're teachers. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is sometimes um, much more than the students. But yeah, this is uh, the nature of teaching. Let's think about it like that. This is the nature because you're a teacher at your home. You're a teacher at your school. You're a teacher at, um, at a community that you just walk in or walk through. For example, at a shopping center, you're a teacher. This, this role is stuck on your soul. <laughs> you're always like this. For example, you just see a kid shouting at his mother and you just, oh no, I should <laughs> do something. Don't shout at your mom. You immediately say, and it's like, um, then then you just say, okay, why did it? Why did I do that? It's not none of my business. But you're a teacher. Um, even if you don't say it, uh, or even if it doesn't come come out of your mouth, you just think of it <laughs> all the time. Um, should I do something or should I not? Yeah, teaching is really, really um, an incredible occupation, uh, indeed. I believe so. Absolutely true. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have any other comments, or do you have any students with fixed mindset now? Um, did Did you? In the future, uh, are you planning to do something with those students? Unfortunately, here in Portugal, students don't need to study because they're obliged to go to school un until they're 18 years old and they complete 12 years of school. Oh, now this is, yeah, they're obliged to go to school until they're 18. Oh, no. So what if a student doesn't want to go? The parent pushes him <laughs> and forces him, go to school, finish your high school. Um, yeah, yeah. If, if it were in Turkey, it would probably like, okay, it's for your military service. You're 18, go to your military service and complete your military service and come back and find a job and then marry a girl or something like that. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, oftentimes I, I see that, okay, we don't um, ask for students' needs or ask for students' uh, interests, like sources of interest. And this is actually crucial for teachers to know the students' needs, the students' um, motivation resources, the students' questions in mind, the students' comments. Um, for example, I use one minute paper on one minute word uh, activity at the end of my lessons. And I just ask them, okay, how did it go? How was the lesson? And just one word, like bad or good or perfect or fantastic or not too bad, okay, so, so, something like that. Um, I have a board, like a little board, and they just go and write something without their names. And then at the end of the lesson, I just go and figure out uh, the results of my lesson. Was, was it effective or was it bad or was it good? Um, was it qualified for them? And yeah, 
oftentimes I see positive comments, but sometimes there are some, <laughs> yeah, like, ah, it was better yesterday. It was better today, like previous week. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I encounter those comments, but it is interesting for self-reflection. And it is really crucial, I think, for a teacher to, to see, um, to observe or to realize this this brings self confidence ah, i couldn't say it self consciousness to the teacher uh, in order to improve uh, their teaching or their teaching style their teaching um, activities in order to improve those activities or those um, techniques or even materials, for example, you sometimes feel that this material is targeted for this lesson. It's like to the point, okay, I'm gonna hit the lesson with this material, but then it turns out to be something disaster. <laughs> you can't even know, um, and you never know what will happen in the lesson, during the lesson, because it's up, it's up to you, of course, but it's up to the students as well and up to the conditions like physical conditions or the um, mental uh, readiness of the students for that lesson for that day. There might be so many reasons for uh, a disaster lesson. So, yeah, yeah. Are you in a public school? Yeah, I'm in a public school. Yeah, it's not private state not parents <laughs> yeah compulsory school completely agree with you but they're all should do the same stuff that's the problem yeah yeah we should we should find a, we should really definitely find a common um rule or common regulation uh but yeah not all the teachers are the same um not all the students are the same and sometimes we have uh have like different techniques or different teaching styles, different teaching methods. And some prefer some other things. Some colleagues prefer some other things. Sometimes you, you see that, okay, your colleague is just standing in front of the students and reads a book and that's all. Sometimes you see a teacher uh, with so many materials like toys and um, even dressed like a clown in the uh, class. And the then the students are like, oh, they're like um, looking, at a uh, looking at the sky with so bright star eyes. And yeah, of course, there should be a common uh, and one regulation for teaching, but but I think it's not uh, authentic. <laughs> um, this is utopia, <laughs> let's say. I wish there would be something like that, but yeah, we should respect every uh, teacher uh, has his or her own teaching style or teaching methods. So we should respect mm, because not all the students like clowns, not all the students like toys, not all the students like um, shiny, colorful materials. They do prefer reading. They do prefer listening. They do prefer writing something on the board. So you'll never know. That's why, um, yeah, you should respect them. Thank you for the sharing ideas. Thank you for joining me with your comments, everyone. I appreciate it. So, yeah. Any other comments or questions do you have in your minds? Thank you. Thank you. Teenagers are tough. <laughs> Yeah, I, I yeah I used to work with teenagers in the in the past like five years ago, and I know how hard to work with them. And sometimes it's just talking. It's just talking. It never gives you something. Um, it 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 doesn't give you something that you can benefit from. It's just talking because you do know that your conditions are unique. Your 
Now, teaching scenario is unique. Your school, uh, for example, the school um, where the school is located or what kind of students you have or what sort of parents uh, you're encountering all the time daily, um, what sort of uh, managers you have, it depends on everything. So sometimes finding common, common problems or finding common uh, yards to swim, <laughs> uh, it's really crucial. Then you just say, okay, I'm not the only person who faced this problem, who faced this challenge, who, who feel um, sad about it. Then you find out about the, the alternatives. Then you um, start realizing or start thinking about alternatives when you just find some people uh, to talk about and share the same problems. It's really cool, actually. So I think I'm done. <laughs> Do you have other questions or comments or remarks? Absent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for allowing me to take your precious time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Great, I hear you. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you don't have any more questions. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the hearts and thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to read your names, but yeah. I could misread them, <laughs> which I don't want. So, because my name is really difficult. It's Gülbin, but sometimes they just say Yulbin or Golbin or something. Yeah. So. Didn't want to make it. Okay. Thank you so much.